Over the Garden Wall was a Cartoon Network animated limited series in 2014. Even though its run was short, the unique storytelling, endearing characters, and wonderful animation style brought it critical success. It still has a following, as it speaks to anyone who has ever felt lost. But we don't always act the best when we're lost, do we? Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Binge, and today we'll be ranking Over the Garden Wall characters from good to evil. All right, time for the rules. For this list, we'll be ranking characters into three categories, the good, the gray, and the bad to evil. We'll be looking not only at how good a character is, but how much they grow. Because of that, of course, there are going to be a lot of spoilers, so consider yourself warned. With that said, let's climb over that wall and get to the list. First is the good tier. This is for characters who are either naturally good or learn to become good. They're the characters who set the best example for the kids watching at home. Our gold medal of good goes to Jason Funderburker, aka Wirt, aka George Washington, aka Ben Franklin, aka Dr. Cucumber. Not to be confused with the human boy also named Jason Funderburker, this frog often steals the show. He encompasses the good nature found in many of the show's other characters, but with none of the hangups or drawbacks. There is one episode where Greg is certain that he'll have to leave Jason behind for a life of music, only to be pleasantly surprised that he rejoins the party. He uses his talents to get them out of a bind, but sticks through to the end. It's a subtle but sweet message about how sometimes being there is the best thing you can do for your friends. There's no doubt that he adds a certain light to the show. The silver medal of good goes to the woodsman. Though he's introduced as a rather suspect character and is at one point believed to be the main antagonist, the woodsman is actually a very good person. Though he's done terrible, terrible things in service of the beast, it becomes clear by the end he was being manipulated. He was letting the false hope of seeing his daughter again blind him into working with a monster that was set on using him for his own purposes. Even when he's working with the beast, it's worth noting that he does his best to warn the children and steer them to safety. There's also his reaction where he finds out where the Edelwood is coming from, at which point he can't continue to use them any longer, even when he thinks he'll benefit. Not only does he overcome his struggle by the end of the show, he also takes the biggest chance and offers the biggest sacrifice. By letting go of the idea of keeping his lost daughter alive, he learns that he can blow out the lantern and defeat the beast, making him a savior. The bronze medal of good goes to Wirt. Wirt is far from being a perfect character, but he's a perfect illustration of how being a good person is a constant series of difficult choices. He has to conquer things like fear, depression, and self-pity. It gives him a lot of room to grow as a person throughout his journey. He's plagued by a lot of troubles, but continues to do his best to get him and his brother safely home against terrible odds. There are times when he succumbs to his weaknesses. Towards the end of the series, he loses all hope, putting Greg in charge and laying down in the woods with little intention of getting back up. When he sees that Greg has run off, he wastes no time in chasing after his little brother to correct his mistake and make sure that his family's safe. He even remembers to take the frog. During that chase, he forgives under pressure. Though we know he can hold a grudge, he was willing to set aside his issues with Beatrice so they could face the beast together as a team. Though he's often thrust into the position of hero and learns not to balk at it, he also knows which battles are best fought by others. The woodsman wouldn't have had his chance to grow had Wirt not returned the lantern to him and let him make the call for himself. Coming in very, very close after his brother is Greg. He is as sweet as potatoes and molasses, isn't he? He gets full points for good intentions and his wholesome nature. We have to give him a pass on being easily distracted because he is a child, but the truth is that he completes fewer actions that actually benefit the greater good. In fact, he often makes things harder because he fails to think things through. His best moment, undoubtedly, is when he uses his wish to go after the beast in an attempt to save his brother. We know Wirt would have done the same for him, but it showed a lot of growth for Greg that he was able to focus long enough to help instead of just thinking about magical tigers. Rounding out the tier is Lorna. Though she was a minor character, we thought it was worth bringing her up. She struggles with some intense demons, literally, but is grateful for the people trying to help her. She also embodies the spirit of forgiveness. Once she has been freed of her demons, she's able to put aside the history of pain she has with her auntie whispers, declaring her family and choosing to stay rather than to make the old woman live alone. We now move on to the gray tier. These are either neutral characters or characters whose deeds cancel out their bad deeds. Kicking off the tier is Beatrice. Beatrice grew a lot, but there's a difference between improving and having a full redemption arc. 
Wirt and Greg wouldn't have been able to survive had she not gotten Wirt to safety after his fall into the water and then chase Greg. But she has a lot to make up for. She confesses to Wirt that she got her entire family turned into bluebirds because she was throwing rocks at the bird that cursed them. She then tries to trick Wirt and Greg into going to Adelaide with the intention of trading them for her family's freedom. Though she gets cold feet about the plan, she still isn't able to come clean, leading the boys right into the trap anyway. There are other personality traits that we think keep her from being in a higher tier as well. She's impatient, rude, and a little selfish. Though she comes through in the end, little is done to address these more harmful aspects of her nature. Next is Enoch. Something about this pumpkin-headed leader at Pottsfield is very ominous, but we think he's mostly harmless. His biggest sin is scaring children and making them do community service for crimes that we really don't think are that bad. On the other side, Pottsfield seems to be a pretty happy place, and his skeleton pumpkin citizens seem happy enough. Up next is Sarah. We don't know a lot about Sarah other than she's sweet and work likes her, but maybe that's enough. Her lack of screen time doesn't give her much opportunity to grow over the course of the show, but neither has she done anything wrong. After her is Jason Funderburker. This time we're talking about the human and not the frog. Though his introduction is framed in a way where we're not supposed to like him for stealing Sarah away from Wirt, we actually feel bad for him. It's obvious his interest in Sarah is not mutual and he's just trying to feel included in the group. Next is a shared slot, Jimmy Brown and Miss Langtree. When we first meet Miss Langtree, she tells us about her handsome devil of a man, Jimmy Brown, who left her without a word. The episode ends happily when we find out Jimmy Brown didn't leave her. He just got stuck in a gorilla costume while trying to earn money to buy her a wedding ring. They are literally the worst at communicating, especially for adults, but it was nice that they got a happy ending. Rounding out the tier is Quincy Endicott and Marguerite Gray. Quincy Endicott and Marguerite Gray are so wealthy and lonely that they don't even realize they built their mansions into each other's properties, each believing the other to be a ghost. They come in at the bottom of the gray tier for their reckless wealth hoarding, but we're glad they found each other. Finally, we move to the bad to evil. These characters are the antagonist, obstacles, and morally corrupt cast that we just can't bring ourselves to forgive. Starting off the tier is Fred the Horse. It may seem harsh to put him in the bad tier, but he's really not a good person. He can talk, but pretends he can't so he doesn't have to comfort Beatrice during the storm. When they point out that he has agency and can do what he wants, he blatantly says that he chooses to steal. He proceeds to make a big mess and only turns things around when frightened by what he believes to be a ghost. We give him credit for finding honest work, but he doesn't try to make amends for any of the damage he's done. Following him is Auntie Whispers. She's another one who's painted to be the bad guy, only for the audience to find out she has good intentions. But if you look even closer, we still believe Auntie Whispers was in the wrong. She's using a magic bell to control Lorna and the evil spirits who are trying to take over Lorna. But instead of banishing the evil spirits, the first thing Wirt tries when he gets the bell, she makes Lorna do housework so the evil spirits can't get into trouble. Since we see at the end that she was afraid to lose Lorna, we have to wonder if she wasn't keeping the spirits around on purpose and getting free labor in the process. That ain't right. That ain't right. The bronze medal of evil goes to the North Wind. We may never know exactly how much of Greg's dream was real and how much was his imagination, so the North Wind might be mostly a construct. But since Greg does get a wish and some tangible insight into his brother's condition, we have to assume the threat he vanquished was real as well. The North Wind was not developed as a villain, but he plays the role of evil well. He takes vengeance on Cloud City, and they have to launch a literal battle against him to get him contained so that he can't wreak any more havoc. The Silver Medal of Evil goes to Adelaide. They built up Adelaide a lot for how little we actually see her. Beatrice says that she's the good woman of the woods to try and lure Greg and work into her company. The truth is that she has demanded Beatrice bring her a child to use as a servant. Her entire house seems to be set up in a way designed to trap children. More chilling is that she says she's going to fill their heads with wool, presumably to make them more obedient and take away their willpower. Despite not having a lot of actual screen time, Adelaide was a very effective villain. We're glad that no more characters got to join Greg's Adelaide party. Taking the gold medal of evil, of course, is the Beast. 
You probably knew this was coming, but our most evil slot has to go to the primary antagonist. His buildup continues in the background of nearly every episode, and the payoff was excellent. There are a few red herrings, with the dog at the beginning and the woodsman's lantern throwing Greg and Wirt off the trail of the real danger. The beast has eternal life, as long as he can keep the flame and the lantern alive. He does this by tricking the woodsman into believing the lantern contains the spirit of his deceased daughter. What makes it worse is that the lantern burns Edelwood oil, and Edelwood trees are made from the souls of lost children. He's intentionally trying to lure children and make them lose hope so that he can keep himself alive eternally. Alright y'all, that's it. Our ranking of over the garden wall characters from good to evil. Who do you think was the best? Who do you think was the worst? Let us know in the comments below. Hey, while you're down there, don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, stay wicked.